Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Manavendra Sharkar, graduate student uh, from University of Missouri. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, LPELC, uh, for giving me the opportunity to present our research work. Uh, my supervisor, Dr. Lim, I'm also thankful to uh, Missouri Department of Natural Resources for funding us uh, to conduct this uh, research. And uh, today, uh, my presentation topic is analysis of Missouri soil health and manure application data. In agriculture, we are always concerned about uh, crop production, uh, and always we are trying to, we are looking for a higher crop yield. Uh, and you know, a crop yield is uh, depends on like soil health status, uh, and uh, soil health status is always associated with different kinds of agricultural practices. So you can see uh, fertilizer application, it could be manure, inorganic fertilizer, and another, another agriculture practice could be cover crop and uh, crop rotation also. And in Missouri, uh, we, are, uh, we, we are trying to adapt cover crop practice, and we are lucky enough uh, that we have a, a program that is called a cover crop cost share program, and we are giving incentives to farmers for the adoption of uh, cover crop practice uh, across the Missouri. And in this, uh, under this research, we have mainly two objectives. First one is uh, statewide data collection and uh, analysis of multi-year soil health variables, inclu including uh, manure application data that is uh, across the Missouri. And another one is uh, to evaluate the effects of manure application and cover crop practice on soil health improvement. Uh, that is from our uh, research plot uh, at University Farm. And you can see uh, two pictures here, uh, here uh, these two pictures from our university research plot. <coughs> so first of all, uh, I'll go through statewide soil health data analysis. And uh, we are collecting uh, soil samples through our uh, cover crop cost share program. And uh, we, are, we are collecting uh, soil samples at seven centimeter depth. Uh, and we are doing uh, some physicochemical analysis uh, at our university uh, soil health assessment center. And for all kinds of statistical analysis, we're applying our software. Uh, mostly we are doing a T test and 2O ANOVA uh, to get the uh, and to effects of different parameters. You can see here are two pictures. First one is uh, soil samples based on fertilizer type. So we are collecting, we have been, we collected soils from 2016 to 2019, and we have a big uh, soil samples. Uh, it's almost 8,500. And uh, we, we separated them based on fertilizer type and uh, cover crop practice. So when I'm talking about fertilizer type, we can see there are three types based on inorganic manure and another in is not applicable. That means it has like uncertainty in uh, fertilizer application. So I didn't include this one uh, for our statistical analysis. However, we can see around 10% samples that received manure. Uh, and if I talk about cover crop practice, uh, we can see around 29% uh, soil samples with cover crop uh, practice. Uh, it, it, it started from like 2010 to 2015 uh, when we were collecting sample 2016. So we look at uh, some agricultural management uh, history from 2010. So here uh, we can see soil sample distribution based on manure application and uh, total uh, 96 counties. So we, we found that, I mean, we, we collected all soil samples from 96 counties. However, uh, we collected soil samples uh, received with manure treatment from 81 counties. And some counties really, they have uh, good manure uh, application like Osses, Petis, uh, not a way, but you can see some counties uh, like white, white, white color. I mean, it's uh, near about Lake of the Ozark. So we didn't receive uh, soil samples from there. And this picture shows for cover crop practice history. And for cover crop practice, uh, 87 counties have been um, identified. I mean, we, we collected soil samples with cover crop, cover, cover crop practice history. And same way, uh, this white uh, uh, colored uh, counties, we didn't receive samples from there. Now, effects of uh, manure application. 
uh, and all that are uh, mean value uh, with standard zero. Uh, we can see uh, as a menu uh, application effect, uh, really they have uh, some significant uh, difference in nitrogen, phosphorus, active carbon, and organic carbon. That means uh, when we apply to menu, uh, so uh, menu increase the nitrogen, phosphorus, active, and organic carbon uh, in the soil. And this is, this is for uh, statewide uh, soil data. From 2016 to 2019, I, I mean, I am I, presenting like all data together. But we can see uh, there is no significant difference for bulk density and water stable aggregates. Okay, that is uh, that is something we, we, we are expecting, but uh, for when, when we analyzed uh, all data, uh, so we couldn't find significant difference uh, in bulk density and water stable aggregate for a manual application that is uh, quite uh, uh, unexpected. Now I would like to share uh, the effects of cover crop practice, and we can see in the same way here. Here all that are uh, mean value uh, and standard error. So we can see when uh, there is cover crop uh, practice that is mentioned as CC, and uh, there is uh, non cover crop that is uh, non CC. So we can see. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and active carbon. These three properties, these three soil properties are really uh, higher, uh, higher for cover crop, cover crop practice. But uh, another unexpected result that is a water stable aggregate is uh, less for cover crop practice. Uh, that, that could be uh, a result of another factors like uh, soil type, uh, or tillers or uh, some other agricultural practices. This is really unexpected because we always expect when we will apply uh, cover crop, so we will uh, have higher uh, water stable aggregate. Uh, we can see here organic carbon and bulk density. Uh, they didn't differ. They didn't differ because of cover crop practice. Here also, uh, especially for bulk density, we are expecting that bulk density uh, could be lower for cover crop practice, uh, but same thing happened. This is really uh, unexpected uh, for cover crop practice also. But now I want to uh, share the interaction effect between fertilization and cover crop practice. We can see this uh, two uh, phosphorus and organic carbon. These two uh, properties uh, are significantly affected by uh, interaction effect between fertilization and cover crop practice. And I'll share details here. Uh, we can see these four letters. This uh, small four letters means significant difference between our four groups. And we can see the highest amount of phosphorus uh, can be found when there is manure with no cover crop. Even when we applied manure with cover crop, that is the second highest. That means uh, we have rest of two groups, that is for inorganic with cover crop and inorganic without cover crop. But from this figure, we can easily see that when we, are, we have manual application, uh, it promote, I mean, it increase the phosphorus content, uh, whether it, 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 con it has another group, uh, cover crop or uh, non-cover crop. So here uh, for organic uh, carbon, we can see the highest amount of organic carbon uh, was found with manure for manure with cover crop. And the se uh, second highest, although there is no significant difference between this group and this group, but second highest was uh, found for manure with non cover crop group. Now I want to share uh, some uh, research uh, data uh, that that is, that has been set up at University Research Farm. I previously I mentioned that we have two uh, two uh, parts. First one is statewide data analysis, and second one is uh, research plot set up at our university farm. And that is really uh, you can say control. And here is the plot distribution. Uh, so we have total 80 plots and is, I mean, whole plot is 30 feet wide and 60 feet long. And then we split it into four. Uh, uh, that means we have four plots that is 15 feet uh, wide and uh, 20, uh, 30 feet its length. I mean, this is the one small small plot. This is another, this is another, this is another. And this four splitted plot uh, makes a whole plot. 
and we can see we have different types of uh, cash crops like wheat, corn, and soybean. Uh, and we have total three treatments here, uh, crop rotation, fertilization, and cover crop. And we have four application of each treatment. And you can see this is the drone shot of our uh, field experiment at our university uh, farm. Now I will share uh, some results and soil samples from the university farm that has been uh, collected and are being analyzed at uh, Soil Health Assessment Center. Uh, but I, we have uh, some uh, cash crops yield to share with you. Uh, here first one is inorganic fertilizer increase the corn yield. I told you we have three cash crops. One is corn, soybean, and wheat. And manual application increased to the soybean yield. Although there is no significant difference for wheat yield, but we can see the application of manure increase the uh, wheat yield. And for cover crop, soybean yield was lower for cover crop, but wheat yield was higher for uh, cover crop uh, uh, practice. And uh, this project, uh, I mean, uh, at our university farm, uh, what we are doing, uh, this will be continued, uh, will be continued next three more years. And so we will have uh, good soil samples and, and we'll, we're doing all analysis. So even we can see uh, for our cash crops yield, I mean, uh, effects of fertilizer, crop rotation and cover crop, uh, that could be a very good uh, in a good uh, experimental setup data that that can be found like after three years. So I just here, this is for one year data. I, I, I presented here from our university plot. So I want to uh, conclude. Uh, th this is actually for, uh, from our statewide data. So many replication results in significantly high amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, active carbon, and organic carbon. And cover crop practice leads to significant high amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and active carbon in soils. And when they have some interaction, uh, I mean, when uh, manure with cover crop that increase the phosphorus and organic carbon compared to inorganic fertilization with or without cover crop practice. But we can see different, different results um, depending on the geographic location uh, maybe soil type it it can it can vary so i want to put this uh, this point also here that uh, depending on soil type farm management uh, weather condition cropping systems that have uh, significant effects on soil health properties also even uh, for uh, to get, to to find a i mean to conclude a uh, good results of any parameter. So we need to uh, run it for long time and more controlled uh, research data. It can really helpful to explain the impacts of any uh, factors. However, still uh, we, we will do some more analysis based on our region, uh, specific soil, menu types, and then we'll, we, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can see uh, some more effects of this, uh, these parameters on uh, soil health properties. And uh, here, here is our contact information if you need any kind of uh, information and further uh, uh, queries. So you can, you can ask uh, or you can send us email um, uh, to us. So we'll answer you uh, on time. Uh, before finishing, uh, really, uh, I, once once again, uh, I will uh, appreciate this organization, even uh, Department of so Natural Resources for funding this project. And uh, I would say thank you for your attention. <laughs>